This recorded presentation provides a brief informal summary of the planned Rubin Observatory data products and analysis tools, and an outline of the boundary between what Rubin Observatory will provide and what will be left to the expertise of the science community. The primary target audience of this presentation is scientists writing or reviewing funding proposals that include preparatory work for science with the Rubin Observatory and its legacy survey of space and time, the LSST. The slides used in this presentation are available on Zenodo at the URL seen here. This presentation uses terms and acronyms, which I will attempt to define where they appear, but as an additional resource, I will first show three glossary slides. Pause the video to read the terms and return to this point um, in the recording at any time. The Rubin Observatory's LSSD science pipelines will create the general use data products and analysis tools, which will enable scientists to produce the expected science deliverables in the four science pillars, probing dark energy and dark matter, taking an inventory of the solar system, exploring the transient optical sky, and mapping the Milky Way. The general use data products and analysis tools developed by Rubin staff incorporate algorithms and software that have been designed, built, and validated by the global astronomical community and represent accumulation of shared knowledge and expertise. However, producing the expected LSST science deliverables and pushing into new scientific frontiers will also require the development of specialized algorithms, data products, analysis tools, and cyber infrastructure that go beyond what will be provided by Rubin Observatory. This considerable amount of work is best left to the specific expertise of the science community. The independent LSST science collaborations are driving this development. This presentation outlines the boundary between what Rubin Observatory will provide and what will be left to the science community. I want to remind all viewers that the Data Products Definitions document, the DPDD, available at ls.st dpdd, remains the ultimate reference for descriptions of the planned LSST data products and pipelines. The publication LSSD from Science Drivers to Reference Design and Anticipated Data Products by Ivizich et al. 2019 is another formal resource for the Rubin information. The data products for transient variables and moving objects will be primarily produced by the prompt processing pipelines, which will perform reduction, calibration, difference image analysis, DIA, source detection and measurement, and alert distribution within 60 seconds of image readout. Alert packets are ASCII files containing data for a single detected source in a difference image, a DIA source. They will include catalog data and small cutouts of the difference in template images. Solar system processing for moving objects will take place during the day. Images and catalogs that result from prompt processing will be available after 80 hours for images and after 24 hours for catalogs and are fully described in section three of the DBDD. All DIA data products will be regenerated during the annual data release processing. Source detection and measurement on direct images, as in non-difference images, will only be done during the annual data release processing. The image types most relevant to LSST time domain science will include the process visit images or PVIs, which are also referred to as direct images. The difference images, which are the result of subtracting a template image from a PVI, and the template images, which are transient free annual deep stacks. The catalogs most relevant to the study of transient objects will be those that result from the detection, measurement, and association of sources via difference image analysis, all of which will be prefixed with the acronym DIA. Note that Rubin Observatory uses the term source to refer to a detection in a single image and the term object to refer to sources associated by sky location. Aside from the DIA source and DIA object catalogs, Force photometry at the location of all DIA objects in all difference images will be stored in the DIA force sourced catalog. The catalogs most relevant to the study of moving objects in the solar system will be the SS source, SS object, and MPC orb catalogs. The SS source and SS object catalogs will contain measurements for detections of solar system objects in the difference images and the MPC orb catalog will contain derived orbital parameters from the minor planet center. The catalogs most relevant to the study of variable objects for which difference imaging is not necessary will be the source, object, and force source catalogs that result from the detection, measurement, and association of sources in the, in the direct images. <clears throat> Generally, the catalogs I just mentioned will include unique identifiers, 
measurements like coordinates, fluxes, magnitudes, and shape and size parameters, the IDs of LSSD static sky catalog objects that are nearby for host galaxy association, orbital parameters derived by the MPC, a limited set of time, ver time variability parameters, and pre-discovery photometry and difference images. Examples of specialized algorithms, data products, and analysis tools that would be left to the expertise of the science community include, but are not limited to, things like photometric and spectroscopic follow-up observations, object classifications like light curve types or astronomical categorizations, cyber infrastructure for the large-scale acquisition, processing, and analysis of follow-up, cross-matching to non-LSST catalogs, host galaxy confirmations, such as distinguishing faint or blended hosts, orbital and or time variability parameters beyond what is in the LSST tables, light curve parameters such as rise and fall times, peak brightness or asteroid rotation rates, shifted and stacked images to detect faint moving objects, multi-night stacks or difference images to detect fainter objects, physical parameters like distance, host extinction, composition, intrinsic magnitude, and event occurrence rates. The data products for static sky objects like stars and galaxies will be primarily produced by the data release processing pipelines, which will reduce, calibrate, and combine, or in other words, stack or co-add, all LSST images, and detect, measure, and characterize sources in both direct and deeply co-added images. Images and catalogs that result from the data release processing will be available annually and are fully described in section four of the DPDD. The images most relevant to static sky science will be the deep coads. The individual process visit images are included in the top table because they will also be part of the annual data releases. The catalogs most relevant to static sky science will be the object table, which will include uh, measurements done on the deeply coadded images. The forced source catalog will contain forced photometry at the locations of all objects in all process visit images and the source catalog will contain the detection in HPVI. Generally, the catalogs I just mentioned will include unique identifiers, measurements like flux, magnitude, colors, and shape and size parameters, centroids and adaptive moments, Petrosian and cron fluxes, deblending parameters such as parent-child associations, point source and bulge disk model fits, aperture surface brightness measurements, photometric redshift estimates, and local shear estimation measures. Examples of additional specialized algorithms, data products, and analysis tools that will be left to the expertise of the science community include, but are not limited to, things like alternative types of deeply stacked co-added images, specialized blending algorithms or probabilistic catalogs for crowded fields, stellar types or physical parameters, Milky Way component associations, specialized low surface brightness measurements, Galaxy photometric redshift or physical parameters beyond those from the adopted general use photos the algorithm. Galaxy shear estimates beyond those provided by the adopted shear algorithm. Other galaxy characterizations like cluster membership or morphology. And cyber infrastructure to support large scale compute intensive processing. In order for scientists to access and analyze the LSST data, Rubin Observatory will provide the Rubin Science Platform, the RSP. The RSP is a set of integrated web-based applications and services running at the Rubin Observatory Data Access Centers, the DACs, which will include tools to query, visualize, subset, and analyze the full LSST data archives in a stable software environment located next to the data with storage space and compute resources. As defined in the science requirements document, the Rubin data management system will provide at least 10% of its total, capa total capacity for user processing and storage. Scientists will be able to pool their compute resource quotas in order to undertake larger processing jobs. If the compute resources provided by Rubin Observatory are oversubscribed, a resource allocation committee will be established. However, due to the unprecedentedly large nature of the LSST dataset, it is anticipated that some of the additional specialized algorithms, data products, and analysis tools that will be left to the expertise of the science community will require significant external cyber infrastructure support in addition to the RSP. A few examples include processing and analyzing follow-up observations for LSST time domain events, running wide area joint pixel analyses with non-LSST datasets, building and using frameworks for probabilistic catalogs, 
iterative development and training for machine learning algorithms, and many, many other applications in the big data era of the LSST. The Rubin Observatory data policy remains the ultimate reference regarding Rubin data rights. It is available at ls.sd slash rdo-013. All data products generated by the Rubin Observatory will have a two-year proprietary period, except the contents of the distributed alert packets and the catalogs produced by prompt processing, both of which are public and can be shared with anyone, anywhere, worldwide. However, the alerts will only be delivered to seven pre-selected brokers, and the prompt processing catalogs will only be available via the RSP. As RSP access is proprietary to data rights holders, the shareable contents of these data products are not publicly accessible. Most of the brokers currently offer or plan to offer public access to the alert packet contents. The LSST science pipelines are open source and will be available to all RSP users. As a final note, please note that the data Q&A category of the Rubin Community Forum is dedicated to answering questions about the planned Rubin data products. Forum membership is open to everyone. You must sign up for an account in order to post, but most content is viewable without an account. To ask a question about the Rubin data products, go to community.lsst.org. Under science, click on data Q&A, and this will take you to the data Q&A category where you can see other questions that have been posted. At upper right, click on new topic and a pop-up form will appear. Compose your question and then click create topic to post it. Rubin staff will answer your question as soon as possible. That brings us to the end of this presentation. Thanks for watching.